This is the Sony 14mm f1.8 G Master and probably one of the best ultra-wide primes available on the market today. This thing has been glued to my camera on my recent trip up to the Rocky Mountains and honestly, spoiler alert, I cannot say enough good things about this lens. This has earned a place in my bag and this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this lens with my own money as usual. So if you do appreciate that guys, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Anyways, we're gonna break this thing down. Here's some specs and a few examples to get you going on the 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master as you see here. It is just a phenomenal lens and for me, my top pick for astrophotography and just a phenomenal option for landscape, for architecture, for indoor and outdoor shots, it's gonna be great for pretty much everything. And like I said, one of the best ultra wide primes available on the market for any brand. So let's jump in and talk about the build of this lens. As you can see, it's a great size and weighing about 460 grams, it's a great weight as well. They packed a ton of features and a ton of performance into this little 14 millimeter. And it really shouldn't exist for the size and for the weight and the fast aperture and the ultra wideness of this thing, it's its really a marvel. And Sony keeps pushing and pushing and breaking the limits of what we think is possible. And man, for this lens, I gotta give them props. So what about the features of this thing? Well, it's got everything you could ever want. It's got a customizable manual focus hold button. It's got an automatic manual focus switch. It's even got an aperturing with a click switch over here so you can choose between hard stops or a nice smooth aperture change. So again, weighing about a pound, it's completely reasonable and doesn't feel like a burden. In terms of the size, it's only about four inches long with the lens hood off. And there is one glaring downside for this thing for some people, not a deal breaker for me, but because of the wide angle nature of this lens, you're not gonna be able to put any filters on the front. There is, however, an option on the back to throw in some gels or maybe even some third party ND filters in the future here. So do keep that in mind, but overall it's the same G Master quality that you'd expect. And it's just a great little package. On the front here, you do see a kind of a bulbous front element, but it is protected by a built-in lens hood. And it does have this big cap that does protect the whole thing on the front and seems to be relatively sturdy on there. Now on the back, we do have a nice metal mount with a rubber gasket for confidence in terms of weather sealing. And I did take this thing into the weather with no issues whatsoever. Now this lens is not image stabilized, nor does it really need to be being a 14 millimeter, just something to note. But in terms of the build and features, I think this thing is a feature packed beast that's very well made and feels great. And I give it four and a half solid stars. Next up, let's touch on the performance of this guy. And I'm happy to tell you that this does perform extraordinarily well, especially if you're into astrophotography. To be honest, I bought this thing for the chance to shoot astro and on this trip, it did not disappoint. My mind was absolutely blown as I saw pretty much the Aurora for the first time up in Canmore, Alberta. And it was a KP8, which is an absolutely mind blowing storm that produced some incredible colors, pillars, and well, it's just kind of all of my wildest dreams put together. It also happened to be a night of a meteor shower and this thing produced some incredible images. I did not have a lot of time to prep. I just pretty much had to run outside, drive down the road, and well, this is what I came up with. Anybody that shoots in low light knows that inevitably we have to pump up that ISO, which results in less than ideal photo and video quality. But I do have a secret for you. I do shoot a lot of birds and wildlife and rely on Topaz Labs to bring back my high ISO shots and eliminate noise, often saving photos that I thought were long gone. This is an absolute must for me and I would totally recommend it if you are into astrophotography as well. Check out this 8,000 ISO image before throwing it into the drag and drop Topaz Labs Photo AI software. It's super easy to use and just look at the results. This is a buy once and own forever type of software and I would completely recommend it to you. If you're interested, links are in the description. So 14 millimeters is of course extraordinarily wide and oftentimes it's gonna be tough to get good compositions, especially if you're just starting out. There's a ton of landscapes in the Rockies and it's almost overwhelming at what you think you should be shooting. Well, this thing is gonna do a great job at capturing a ton of it, including the night sky like I showed you. It's also gonna be great for things like architecture, indoor, outdoor shots. It's pretty much good for everything. Now in terms of the autofocus, it's fast, it's reliable, and it's basically silent. 
In terms of manual focus, it is electronically coupled to your camera and does provide a nice, smooth, and accurate experience. It's worth noting that if you are a video shooter, this lens does suffer from a little bit of focus breathing. So if that's an issue for you, well, you've been warned. Some of Sony's camera bodies have a focus breathing compensation feature that is compatible with quite a few lenses. Fortunately, this is also one of them that does take advantage of that feature. Now this lens does have an incredibly fast f1.8 aperture making it ideal for low light situations and traditionally with a wide angle lens it's tough to get nice creamy out of focus backgrounds and beautiful bokeh. But that's really not the case with this lens. You will have to get relatively close to your subjects but it can offer you some quite beautiful bokeh. With a minimum aperture of f16 you can stop down and get some brilliant looking sun stars and in terms of chromatic aberration it's very well controlled. We'll dive into a more detailed look at the sharpness in a second but in terms of distortion and vignetting which can be an issue for wide angle lenses this thing does also do pretty good. In terms of distortion it's a lot better than I expected with no complaints and in terms of vignetting there is a little bit to speak of so do be aware of that and if that's a concern make sure your in-camera corrections are turned on. Now, if you're into astrophotography, I think this is one of your best picks. And in terms of coma, this thing is going to perform extraordinarily well. This is definitely my favorite astro lens to date. And if that's what you're going to be shooting, I would highly recommend it. When it comes to flare control, this lens is surprisingly good. No deal breakers, and for me personally, I don't usually mind a little bit of flare. But just know that this lens does perform quite well in terms of flare control. In terms of sharpness, it is a G Master lens and performs as such, and the sharpness is actually great in the center and even into the corners. Wide open, there's nothing to worry about. I didn't do my typical sharpness test in the studio because, well, this lens is very wide and it's very difficult to do. You're probably not too concerned with corners wide open anyways, but as you can see here, more than adequate in terms of sharpness. Now in terms of performance as a whole, I think this lens is a real winner as you saw. No complaints from me, and I give it a solid four and a half stars. Let's quickly touch on the price and value of this lens. At $1,600 US dollars, it's not cheap, but doesn't disappoint in terms of performance like you saw, but there's really not much to compare it to. This lens is for somebody who's looking for the utmost performance out of an ultra wide prime, and I really think that you're gonna get it. In terms of value, I think it's solid, and I give it four stars. So there you have it guys, there's my thoughts on the 14mm f1.8 G Master, an all around beast of a lens and I cannot recommend it enough to you. Here's all my personal pros and cons for this lens. Now if you're a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And if you are in the market for an ultra wide prime and you like to shoot astro, landscapes and everything in between, I think this is a no brainer and I would completely recommend it to you. Let's leave it at that guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you did want to pick this lens up, I'll drop affiliate links down below. Make sure you drop all your questions and your comments and like always make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.